This week we have our fingers crossed, hoping none of our Kickstarter Pickstars are canceled before they are done for the week of May 27th, 2019. We're starting off with a blast from the past, because Stronghold Games is reviving the old game Egizia as now Egizia Shifting Sands. This is a worker placement game where you are in Egypt trying to build uh, six major monuments. You'll be traveling down the Nile River, uh, placing your boats, your workers, as different actions. However, the twist is when you place a boat, your next boat has to be down the river. So you can't try to travel upstream. Uh, there'll be six different monuments that you make a lot of different points. And this is the, the Shifting Sands is actually going to have a new board. Uh, they replace some of the monuments with some different actions. But if you do want to play that old original style, the, just for the Kickstarter, not for the retail release, uh, you can flip the board over. It'll have the old board so you can get that classic feeling just as well. Uh, it seems a lot of people are really excited about this. Seems like a really popular game. I do like that idea of the worker placement. You know, downstream, there's a bit more planning besides just, I'm going to keep taking the good spot. You know, you have to think of, oh, I really want to use my boats optimally. So I, maybe we'll take that weaker spot that's upstream, though, just because there's nothing I want on the lower end. It's always nice when, because there are so many worker placement games, it's always refreshing to see them put some kind of a spin on it. Mm -hmm. And cool that they offer that reverse board, because, yeah, sometimes there are people who are just big fans of the original or, or have an old copy or never got the chance to try it and an they want to see it. Another example is, I believe, I read through the comment section that someone on Board Game Geek actually has a solo variant for the original one. I don't know if they're including it in this one and mm. they made their own. But it's that way if you do want to play solo and they don't include it, that you, will allow you it. will be able to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so really cool. The, the, I always like it also because this relates back to our video. We talked about how some games also just never get printed again. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to see these. And as we said, Kickstarter is where they should go. Yeah, this is a perfect place for it. And an upgrade version too, so you can get the, both the new and the old. Yeah. Uh, it is for $39, so you can see if you want to check out the Shifting Sands. Here's another button-shy wallet game for you called Tussie Mussy, uh, with a big pedigree behind it because it's from Elizabeth Hargrave, uh, recently acclaimed designer of Wingspan, and Beth Sobel is the artist who also did the art for Wingspan, along with a lot of other games like Arboretum. Uh, you've seen her art around in board games. This game is all about flowers in the Victorian era. It's a simple game, fits in a wallet, like I said. On your turn, you're going to offer a another person Person, two cards, these different cards will be t different types of flowers, and one of those cards will be face up and one will be face down. And the person has to choose if they want to take the one they can see or the one that they can't see. And whatever they take, they keep. The one they don't take, you keep. And at the end of the game, uh, the face down cards and the face up cards that you've collected, you'll have uh, four total, will be turned into points based on, could be the colors of them. Some cards might say, this counts as one of this color, or depending on whether this is face up or face down, it counts as a different amount of points. So. Very simple, but you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, how do I give the person what I think they want with while still letting them keep what I want? Do, and are they going to always go for the face down because they assume you're giving them the bad deal? Or do you want to give them something that seems really good? Or maybe you, know, maybe you do want them to take the face up one? You know, there's all kinds of head games you can play. <laughs> no, that sounds like a, a really fun mechanic. Uh, also, I like this game just to be like, the name. You know, like, <laughs> Tussie Mussie. Yeah. Uh, who's up for some uh, Tussie Mussie? Anyway. Yeah. It sounds like a classical uh, game you play over tea, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it seems like fun. It's just $10. Not if you bad. like these button shy wallet games, this is their 52nd, they said. They have put out Ooh. a ton of them. <laughs> you have one for every week of the year now. <laughs> so uh, go ahead, check it out for $10, Tussie Mussie. We're now going to stomp in with Soaring Rhino, uh, which has made the game Mammoth. In this game, you are working on the, in essence, bring, the idea of bringing mammoths back to life and in restoring the forest area in the Siberia back to the mammoth pla uh, plainlands. In order to do so, your mammoths are going to have to stomp around to make some pretty flowers. So I guess there's a little Okami in there, too. Uh, in this game is a tile placement. You will start on a tile with your mammoth, and you will have in your hand tiles of, mammoth, of flower cards, in essence, that have pads on them as well. And you'll be working on placing the different pads in different colors in order to make large areas of either like yellow or purple or red and connecting these pads and also maybe using other little animal tiles as well to make to bring back these prehistoric creatures to their former glory. 
this just sounds cool. I'm always attracted to anything with prehistoric creatures on there. And it is sort of related to the idea of what we would want to do if we chose to bring back uh, these creatures. I know there's always debate on should we bring back extinct animals. I'm always for. <laughs> always, uh, yes. I learned nothing from Jurassic Park. I think <laughs> if there's a way to go, it's by dinosaurs. So nothing bad from Jurassic Park. The only bad thing is that the dinosaurs are cheaper to make in real life than the CGI. <laughs> uh, yeah, which I consider a positive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this basically is Jurassic Park for mammoths, right? It's uh, What period were mammoths from? Uh, were they part of the... They're not part of the they Cretaceous. They were later. Yes, they're, they're much, much later. Yeah. They were around when the pyramids were being built. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how we uh, destroy things. <laughs> uh, I don't know if mammoths, did we actually hunt them? or I mean, uh, did, We, we sure. hunt them, but is that why they died I think out? that's up to... It's, we were a factor, but I don't think it's like the dodo were like, yeah, it was us. See, this is an educational game. <laughs> I need to research mammoths. It does have a cooperative and solo mo uh, competitive, not solo, mode two. So whether you want to all work together or just prove your herd is better than everyone else's. <laughs> it's $40, and once again, it's simply Mammoth. The Deal is a new role-playing game from Broken Ruler Games. Actually, they call it a live-action role-playing game, also known as LARPing. <laughs> so get ready for this one. Like I said, it's called The Deal, and it revolves around a game of poker. You actually play poker during this game. Uh, it's a set of cards that you would shuffle into a normal standard sized poker deck. And as you're playing, those cards may come out and if they are dealt to you, you read them and they take an effect. The storyline of the game is that one of the players at the table is blackmailing the others. And depending on which character card you got at the beginning, you're gonna have a different goal and you're gonna be trying to do something different. And as the game goes on, little twists and turns, that's actually the name of the cards, like I said, will come out in the deck and you have to follow their instructions. They may change your behavior. Uh, there may be props involved, particularly the table itself comes into play throughout a lot of the game. This is a weird one. Uh, it's not, they haven't uh, really shown off what a lot of the cards do exactly. I think partially because there aren't that many and uh, you could easily maybe recreate it yeah, yourself. They want to keep that hidden. But the idea I loved was of playing, really playing poker, but having a story go with it seemed like a very immersive, creative idea. Uh, not having never LARPed before. <laughs> yeah, because, oh, well, the first thing that comes to mind when, with LARPing is usually like an open field with, you right, know, yeah. move, there's movement to Throwing involved, fire not. bolts. Yeah, this is all around a table. You don't move. I do hope, though, if think. one of those cards you said involves a table is flipping it, that they tell you in advance. <laughs> uh, you want to make sure you re you're, you're willing to flip the table you're at. Yeah, yeah, you should be willing to do that. Uh, you can pick this up for only $7. You get the PDF, and you also uh, get a coupon to print the cards through drive through cards. Cards. Uh, they also have a higher tier where you can get a poker card deck with it if you don't have one already. <laughs> Finally, we're going to stop off at the Adventure Mart run by Digisprite. This is a deck building game where you are running a fantasy store uh, and it's, you're trying to get all the adventurers to come to your store and prove you're the best manager out there. Uh, you'll be doing this with a basic set of supply, aka your deck, with things like a pet slime, which is adorable. And you'll be buying not only just new things to put into your deck, like, you know, better supplies to attract more people, but also you'll get some more permanent things like a slushy machine. <laughs> and then, of course, you'll all be bidding on the adventures. You'll choose an item everyone will put out for the adventure. And the adventure could be like, I'm looking just for weapons because he's from the Warriors Guild. He could be from the Mages Guild. Or he could be from the Thieves Guild and he's just going to try to steal stuff from your store. <laughs> Who knows? So I just love the theme. I always love the idea of these games. I feel like we've seen a more and more of the fan running the store instead of being the actual adventurer. Yeah. The art is adorable. And I do actually think it is have the clever idea of the deck building and thinking about what adventures are coming out and being like, okay, uh, I ha I'm really going to go all in on when those warrior cards come out or something. Yeah, I like the thought, the idea of the, the bidding that you're, you're talking about. That seems cool. And yes, the art is very yeah. adorable. <laughs> there is also, you can hire, I forgot to mention, employees too to help out. And you actually, it seems to be a mechanic where you can get some if you're doing, like you didn't get any adventures to come to your store because... So there's a good catch-up catch mechanic, mechanic yeah. there, which is nice. So I think this just looks like a really cute, fun game. And if you're into deck building, which isn't too hard, I think so. Any more people can get behind it. It's $44. So still about the price of most medium-sized board games. Most expensive one for the, uh, this episode, but definitely cheaper compared to a lot of Kickstarters we look at. <laughs> mm -hmm. So check it out.
Those were our picks for the week. Like we said, some cheaper ones in there, uh, some $10 or under, mm -hmm. so not too bad. You can check those out. Uh, there's some other ones you might want to look at. I know I noticed uh, an expansion for Sailing Towards Osiris from Daily Magic Games, but we hadn't played the original, mm -hmm. the base of it, so I, I didn't want to pick it this week. We also did a preview this week for a game that went up, a gladiator-themed game, Gladiatores, as I mm -hmm. say with the, you know, the Italian Blood for Roses. Accent. That's right, Blood for Roses, <laughs> the full title. Uh, so you can check that out if you're interested. In that. And another thing, we have a contest running right now to win some uh, King of Tokyo and New York stuff because we are excited for the Godzilla movie. <laughs> That's right, which will be coming out tomorrow night if mm -hmm. you're uh, looking for some Godzilla. But the contest will be running for a month, so you have time yeah. to, to go and sign up. Uh, Till next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit, Kickstarter, Pickstarter. If you want to help out, you can check out our Patreon, or a simple click to like and subscribe can go a long way. We really appreciate everything that you can do for us. We love you!